After two years, it's finally here. Frederick Knudsen's highly anticipated documentary on EVE Online. Unsurprisingly, even for a documentarian who has covered topics like the downfall of Noah and Twyler, the tragic story of the Collier brothers and, most recently, the Battle of May Island, EVE Online has resulted in his largest, most ambitious project yet. And it truly is unsurprising. EVE Online, currently on its 21st year since release, is one of the most successful and complex products ever created. And while its history and mechanics have been documented to some extent across forums, blog posts, chat logs and wikis, it has never been compiled into a single resource that can be more easily digested and understood by what I'm sure could be described by hardcore EVE players as normies scum. Normies scum like me, really, as I didn't know much about EVE Online beyond it being derisively referred to as Spreadsheets the video game when I was a forum dweller many years ago. A moniker that honestly sparked my curiosity more than anything else. After all, there has to be something behind the spreadsheets if people are willing to dump thousands of hours in them without discernible rewards. So how does it work for us non-Eve diehards? Put simply, I think this down the rabbit hole is superb. A stellar work from the new intro all the way to the credits. Eve is complex enough that any documentarian wanting to take a crack at it and present something beyond the barest overview of its history has to be extremely careful. Presenting the history of Eve and the systems that were created in and around it requires a delicate writing hand and an eye forever focused on pacing, content density, and the occasional need to repeat yourself. Otherwise, it's extremely easy for the audience to just lose interest as events and terms are dumped in front of them while they're being asked to keep up and keep all of it in memory. In my case, the losing interest bit happens somewhere around the 40 minute mark. Down the rabbit hole episodes are always divided into sections, but on this one more than any other they were welcome as markers where one could stop, breathe, hydrate and maybe go do something else for a while. It's a very tense documentary, but the clearly defined sections and appreciated callbacks make it go down a bit easier. And while that's really impressive, there's no getting around the fact that this video is almost 6 hours long. At 40 minutes before I decided to take a break I was at DC 11% in. It would be one thing if it was meant to be used as an extremely long podcast to make tedious work hours a little bit less tedious, but with the subject matter, the graphical representations of battles and evolving territories created by Arcaxon, Ryan Probert's background score and exclusive content and interviews only found in this documentary, this is a video that demands your attention. Almost 6 hours of your attention. As much as I liked it, that's perhaps a little bit too much of a demand. The majority of viewers will indeed see it in parts over several days, but its release as a single video implies, to me at least, that it's supposed to be seen at once or with as few interruptions as possible. Otherwise the video could have been released in parts, even if it was treated as a single project in production. I don't expect Frederick Scott's Scorsese meme-like illusions of people not just watching his video in batches of 20 minutes at a time across 18 or so bathroom breaks, but it's clearly not the optimal way to consume it. As I was trying to process my feelings for this, I realized that it reminded me in many ways of another piece of media. It has been called the most controversial motion picture of its time. It is the most talked about and written about film of the decade. Now, from the director of The Deer Hunter, United Artists presents Michael Cimino's Heaven's Gate. Michael Cimino's 1980 masterpiece Heaven's Gate. After his previous movie The Deer Hunter achieved almost unanimous critical praise and five Academy Award wins, Cimino was given complete control over his next film. This resulted in an excellent 219 minute movie, which was about as uncommercial a film as you could get without deliberately going for shock and disbelief. Trans America and United Artists, quickly realizing that this 40 million dollar turkey was going to take them down, attempted to save the film through a recut and ended up not making back even a tenth of their money for all their troubles. Both Chimino's and UA's version flopped on release, got savaged by the critics, and marked the end for Chimino as a bankable director. United Artists as an independent studio, and the entirety of the artist-led era of Hollywood, as studios started exercising more control over film production. No, this down the rabbit hole will not mean the collapse of the current way to make online content. At worst it'll be an example. Another data point to demonstrate that it is possible to make a long-form documentary about a complex topic that caters to a mainstream audience. By the way, shout out to everyone making a 6 hour documentary about what Teen Titans Go can tell us about the current political situation and its origins on neo dadaism and the subversive culture as evidenced by the Luddite movement of 19th century Britain. But see, once the negative hype died down and everyone had forgotten about it for a while, Heaven's Gate was re-evaluated and the result was that… 
Yes, Shimino had created a great film, one that probably wouldn't have made any money regardless, but that didn't deserve the savaging it got from the press. Savaging led by the contemporary movie critics that had been following the film since its first delay, years and millions of dollars before release. Fred's production and difficulties therein have only been made available to people in his confidence and, to a lesser extent, his patrons, presumably. And because we can stop the movie and leave the theater whenever we please on this one, we're all considerably more accepting of a beautiful, well-written, expensive to make, very delayed release. Out of the many lessons that this project has undoubtedly taught Fred and his team, I hope that one of them is perhaps demonstrate that there's nothing wrong with releasing something like this in parts. Even if, as Fred mentioned on the stream with his bestie Jabroni Mike, he's reticent about the idea. Presumably this is a response to his previous attempt to do such a thing in the anime and otaku episode. Then again, with a topic such as EVE Online, releasing it as a single video may be the best course of action, as making it in parts could cause the project to continue to increase in scope, and have the unfortunate effect of making the channel EVE-centric for a while to the detriment of the breadth of topics for which Down the Rabbit Hole is known. Still, the last attempt to release a video in parts was almost seven years ago. Fred is nowhere near the same place that he was at the time. For that matter, he is nowhere near the same place he was when production of these videos started. After initial live stream efforts, which Fred claimed were very draining for him, he resumed streaming as a hobby and secondary creative outlet in 2020 first with a small collection of Quarantine tea streams before committing to a more consistent schedule and taking a VTuber avatar. In 2023, Fred joined Meriwether Media's lineup of VTubers named Astraline to continue its success in the field. With this video out of the way, and hopefully after a well-deserved break, it's expected that Fred will resume working on smaller projects which have been deferred, such as The Warrens, a podcast created by him and Jabroni Mike, or supplementary material and streams as showcased on his second channel, so outstanding work, Fred and team. You've knocked it out of the park. Now please don't try to do any of this again, and if you do, perhaps six hour long videos spread across a week. You get more revenue that way.